بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نقد رسول کریم سو ٹوڈے ان شاء اللہ ویل اسٹارٹ اور لیکچر دیٹ از اباؤٹ فلو اور ویئرس اینی ون وانٹس ٹو سمرائز واٹ وی اسٹینڈرڈ ان دی لاسٹ ویک Okay, so we discussed about uh, the vortex flow and the flow over notches. Flow over weirs is almost similar to that of a flow over notches. Notch and weir are, uh, as, as I mean, if we talk about it, its its function then the function of both the uh, both these things are same however there is a difference of scale notch is particularly made on a small scale uh, for example in a laboratory channel an open flume in order to measure the discharge a notch is installed at the end of the channel <clears throat> whereas if we talk about the weirs so the purpose is same to measure the discharge and it is uh, and, and the function is to raise the water uh, level in in an open channel however the weir we usually constructed on a large scale so no, as as i said that notch is on small scale so usually it is made up of metallic plate iron or steel etc and on the other side weirs on a large scale are constructed either due to masonry or concrete etc okay so the purpose is almost same so a weir is a structure which is used to dam up a stream or a river over which water flows is called a weir okay used to dam up a stream dam up means that it is just like a barrier which is uh, constructed in front of the in 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 a in a way and uh, of a river and which actually increases the water level how it increases the water level For example if say if we have uh, a canal and initially the water level is somewhat here so when we construct a weir here then obviously there would be a recirculation region here and the water level will increase and it will start overflowing the river okay so now we have an increased water depth so another purpose of installation of a weir is that in some areas say agriculture lands uh, the the agriculture land is somewhat higher than the water level say for example this is if 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 i draw cross section of a canal say it is here and we have an agriculture land uh, here and if you want to divert the water <clears throat> to this agriculture land then it's not possible as the water level is lower than the agriculture land so it will flow in this direction however if we if we construct a weir if we construct a weir here then the water level will increase and due to this increase in water level we can just divert it to some agricultural land so this is another purpose of construction of a weir that we increase the water level for any purpose so the conditions of the flow in the case of a weir are practically the same as th- those of rectangular notch that is why a notch is sometimes called as a weir and vice versa the only difference between a notch and a weir is that a notch is of small size but the weir is of a bigger one okay moreover a notch is usually made in a plate whereas a weir is usually made of masonry or concrete <clears throat> so 
So a notch is an opening inside of the mining tank or a reservoir extending above the free surface. A weir is a notch on a large scale used, for example, to measure the flow of the river, and it may be sharp edged or have substantial breadth in the direction of the flow. Sharp edge means that a weir can be a very sharp sort of a plate, and it can also be a broad crested. So this is a crest. Okay, so this is a crest. So here the crest is sharp, but here the crest is very wide and broad. So the water will flow like this. So this is a weir. So the first one is the sharp crested weir, and the second one is the broad crested weir. Okay. Any question up till here? Any question? Okay, so these are some pictures of the weir. As I said, that is of large scale and is usually made of concrete or masonry. So it is an open, it's a river basically. So here you can see that the a wheel is constructed. Okay, so the water starts flowing over the wheel. Similarly, here as well. So this is the wheel. Now, the different types of wheel includes it, it. It can be varied with respect to shape, uh, just like. That of a notch, either it can be a rectangle or trapezoidal. Nature of discharge: it, an ordinary weir is an ordinary weir means that the downstream water level. If this is the downstream and this is the upstream, if the downs the downstream water level is less than the top height of the weir. Okay, but if we talk about the submerged weir, then it is basically uh, like this. Even the downstream water level is higher than the top height of the weir. So, in, so that is why this is called a submerged weir. If we <coughs> if the discharge is very high, then the effect of weir is negligible in mm, transforming the water profile. In that case, the weir becomes drawn to submerged. Okay. And the third classification can be based on the width of the crest. As I said that in the previous slide, that this is a narrow crested, uh, and the other one is the broad crested. Nature of crest as well, it can be sharp like this, or it can be an ogi shape. Ogi shape means like this. Just like the shape of the dam spillway from where the water flows out. <clears throat> a weir, just like a notch, can be V notch type. It can be suppressed rectangular, contracted rectangle, C polity means trapezoidal. So, what is the difference between B and C? Can anyone tell? What is the difference between B and C? Sir, C is enclosed between two walls and the B is open. Okay, and B, what is B? Sir, B is open, we don't have any wall around. Yeah. Actually, uh, say, we have a channel. And the water is flowing out of it. So this B is like this. The wheel is constructed. So there is no side contraction. There is no contraction places uh, from the sides. Okay. Whereas in C, it is 
like this so the water will have will have to squeeze it from the side so there is an effect of end contraction in this side in the later part of uh, today's lecture we will discuss how much we need to consider this end contraction it is a function of we usually take it as a function of h and simplicity means trapezoidal so it has some certain side slopes as well okay so any question up till here so next is the discharge over to the rectangular wheel so it is similar to that of a rectangular notch even the formula is same all the procedure all the things which we studied in the last lecture regarding notch you can simply copy paste here but the author has made only one if you remember uh, the in the in the notch we considered b as the width of the notch but here just to make a, a little bit diff, uh, in order to make a bit differentiate between notch and a wheel the author of the book just has considered l in case of a wheel so all the things are same even you can replace it with b h is the height of water above the above the crest of the wheel first of all we need to consider a strip having a thickness of dh and the height of the water above that strip is small h so you can just read it by yourself and finally just you can see that the formula for finding of the discharge of a wheel is same as that for notch except this where it is b in case of a notch 2 by 3 cd l under root 2g power h 3 by 2 so here h is basically the height of water above the wheel okay so it it is basically just like 0 and 1 so as we took integration of 0 and 0 and h1 so if we have different heights let's say this is h1 and this is h2 then we need to we need to integrate from h1 to h2 if we uh, need to integrate in this case then uh, the formula would be like this however it is basically h2 minus h1 is basically equal to h okay so similar problem walaikum assalam zakla aap theek hai alhamdulillah kuch nahi hua hai सोल्व इट Who can solve it? So length of the wheel is given. First of all, uh, you should write the formula, which is two by three C D L under root two G. h power 3 by 2 so if a rectangular wheel 4.5 meter long so length is given has a head of water which is 300 mm h is also given determine the discharge you just need to find the q as cd is also provided which is 0.6 so just put all the values in the formula of q and you will be able to find the q 
It's very simple. It is all same as that of the notch. The problem to states that a wheel which is eight meters long, so this is L, to be built across a rectangular channel to discharge a flow of nine cubic meters per second. So this is Q. If the maximum depth of water on the upstream side of the weir is two meters, what should be the height of the weir? If the maximum depth of water on the upstream side of the weir means if this is a weir, the water is going like this. So the maximum depth is two meters. What should be the height of the weir? X find karna. Okay. How can we find X? Kaun batayega? How can we find this X? Aaj saare soye ve kyun hai? Koi bhi response nahi de raha. जी अहमद फराज फेज अहमद फराज एबसेंट है सर जो टोटल हाइट होगी उसमें से जो हमने मालूम की होगी उस वो माइनस कर लेंगे तो एक्स निकल आएगा हम क्या मालूम करेंगे हम हाइट मालूम करेंगे सो द टोटल हाइट इज टू मीटर्स और द मैक्सिमम वाटर डेप्थ वी आर गोइंग टू फाइंड दिस एक्स सो वी हैव द प्रोसीजर ऑफ फाइंडिंग दिस एच सो इफ वी आर एबल टू फाइंड द एच विद दिस फार्मूला देन सिंपली टू माइनस एच इज इक्वल टू एक्स very simple so third problem the daily record of the rainfall over a catchment area is 0.2 million cubic meters it has been found that 80% of the rain water reaches the storage reservoir and then passes over a rectangular weir what should be the length of the weir if the water is not to rise more than 400 mm above the crest above the crest means this is h and we we need to find l coefficient is also given so in order to find l first of all we need to find q okay so how can we find q it is written here basically this statement from here to here so <clears throat> the daily record of rainfall the quantity of rainfall is given and the area over which the rainfall uh, drops is also given the catchment area it has been found that 80% of the rain water reaches storage reservoir means say if have if we have an area of 0.2 into 10 to the power 6 millions uh, meter cube cubic meters per day it is basically the rainfall it is rainfall which is area kuch bhi ho sakta hai theek hai what is catchment area can anyone tell What is catchment area? No sir, no idea, no sir. Okay. Catchment area is basically a hydrologic term. You will study uh, in detail in your probably fifth semester hydrology subject. Please turn off your mic. we usually take it as a catchment area of of some river say river enters 
say we have a river in this. And obviously, there are certain mountains or in between it flows just like. So the boundaries just like this and this. Uh, when we have a rainfall, okay, it occurs everywhere. Even in the in the river as well. <clears throat> all the area, all the area, say the rain drops here, and ultimately it travels into this river. Okay, but the rain which actually drops here will not move into this river, but it will move to the other side. As I so the boundaries or the extent of the area. जहां से पानी अल्टीमेटली रिवर इंडस में आ रहा है सो दैट होल एरिया वी कॉल इट एज कैचमेंट ऑफ दिस रिवर इंडस कैचमेंट एरिया कैच से निकला है कैचिंग ठीक है मींस के इसने यहां से जो जितना भी पानी कैच हुआ है वो सारा इस रिवर में जा रहा है लेकिन इस ग्रीन लाइन से अक्रॉस जितना पानी आ रहा है वो इस रिवर में नहीं जाएगा सो दिस पर्टिकुलर एरिया इज नॉट द कैचमेंट ऑफ रिवर इंडस ओके Similar, for say if we have a rooftop and we have a drain at on on its one side. Okay. Jitna bhi pani is chhat pe girega, usne kahan jana ultimately? Koi batayega? वेरी गुड सो इट मीन्स दैट दिस होल और दिस ड्रेन हैज अ कैचमेंट एरिया ऑफ से एक्स वाई ठीक है जी नाउ इफ आई से दैट वी हैव फोर डिफरेंट होल्स ऑल प्रोवाइडेड एट इट्स साइड एंड द स्लोप द मैक्सिम स्लोप इज लाइक दिस so these green lines is the the highest point of the the roof means the slope is towards this side ab iski slope aise hai ke jitna pani barsega wo is drain mein jaye so now each drain has an catchment area of x y by 4 aise hi hai kuch yes sir so each drain has a catchment area of x by 4 means pani obviously ye <coughs> physically ke obstruction nahi hai but humne slope aise di hai chhat mein ke charon taraf pani equally jaye to jo pani is idhar brush raha hai usne idhar move karna hai jo idhar gir raha hai usne idhar move karna hai so this is the concept of catchment area okay so now <coughs> the problem says that the daily record of rainfall over a catchment area is 0.2 million cubic meters if we know the intensity of rainfall say per millimeter per hour usually it is given in millimeter per hour if this is the intensity and if we multiply with the area so it becomes say meter cube the units is of meter cube per second so this is a unit of discharge q so which is given in which is directly given in this problem the daily record of rainfall jo kitna catchment area mein volume of water kitna aa raha hai about 0.2 million meter cube per day hai. this is the rainfall <clears throat> however it has been found that 80% of this rain water reaches the storage reservoir so 20% are losses or you can say that it 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 uh, it can move to any other place say just like ye 100% chal raha tha pani isme aur we have a small drain here or and we have a storage as a well here so 20% humne dekha ki wo kahi aur divert ho raha to 80% is reservoir ke andar aa raha hai okay so our discharge would be 80% of this 0.2 to 10 to power 6 h is given cd is given <clears throat> so the only thing which is 
uh, I mean unknown at the moment is discharge. So which is 80% of rainwater. So 0.8 multiply by this volume of water. So our final answer of Q is 1.85 meter cube per second. Make sure that you convert the units from day to second and even all this say centimeter, millimeter, etc. All the units must be in meters second. Okay. All uh, units must be in all uh, in the fundamental dimensions, fundamental units on. Baki uh, discharge the formula masari values put and you will find L. Any question? No, sir. Okay. So next topic is basically uh, the effect of end contractions. I have told you that contractions affect this. Just like if we have a weir, an open channel, but the weir is up somewhat here. So there is no effect of end contraction. But if we make a weir like this, then there would be an end contraction just like this. You can see. अब इस फिगर को अच्छी तरह ऑब्जर्व करें और मुझे कोई एक स्टूडेंट बताए कि एंड कॉन्ट्रैक्शन से फ्लो पे क्या इफेक्ट हो रहा है दीज आर ऑल ब्लॉकेजेस एक चीज ये जो ये पोर्शन है मींस दिस इज इंपरमीएबल पानी यहां से पास नहीं कर सकता इट हैज टू डाइवर्ट जस्ट लाइक अ वियर से और यू कैन से दैट दिस इज योर बाउंड्रीज ओके नेक्स्ट जी कौन बताएगा इस फिगर को ऑब्जर्व करके किसी को नहीं पता फ्लो चेंज हो रहा है सर डिस्चार्ज ज्यादा हो जाएगा फ्लो चेंज हो रहा है What is the length of weir which we considered in our previous numericals? जो हम अभी से पहले previous numericals में length consider कर रहे थे, वो length कौन सी थी? वो ये length थी, means के weir से इधर तक. ये ले रहे हैं ना जबकि yes, फ्लो की जो विड्थ है वो कम है या ज्यादा है लेंथ से कम है सर कम है वेरी गुड सो द एक्चुअल लेंथ व्हिच शुड बी कंसीडर इज लेस देन व्हाट वी आर कंसीडरिंग से एल लेंथ ऑफ द वियर Just like Vena contractor, if you if you remember the orifice, we had a Vena contractor means where the diameter is least and velocity is maximum. That was the definition of Vena contractor. However, if you the diameter of Vena contractor or the jet of water is less than the diameter of the orifice. ऐसे ही था ना अगर से orifice का diameter ये है तो वीना कंडक्टर को उससे कुछ कम था सिमिलरली इन इफ वी टॉक अबाउट द कॉन्ट्रैक्टेड वियर द लेंथ ऑफ द वियर इज ग्रेटर देन द एक्चुअल फ्लो विड्थ फ्लो विड्थ सेस इट इट वुड बी समवट हियर अगर आप फ्रंट से उसको देखें यहां से पानी जो बाहर आ रहा है क्योंकि ये कॉन्ट्रैक्ट हो गया पीछे से पानी ने कॉन्ट्रैक्ट होके इधर आना है तो ड्यू टू इनर्शिया इनर्शिया क्या होता है कि जो भी पोजीशन है बॉडी की वो इट ट्राई टू मेंटेन इट्स ओरिजिनल पोजीशन सो द वाटर ट्राइज टू मेंटेन इट्स कॉन्ट्रैक्टेड विद मींस इट ट्राइज टू मूव लाइक दिस सिमिलरली इट ट्राइज टू मूव लाइक दिस हाउएवर देयर इज एन इनकमिंग वाटर एज़ वेल व्हिच पुशेस दिस लेयर ऑफ वाटर टू 
go back. So in this way, there is a contraction, slight contraction takes place. So this is pure fluid mechanics, etc. Uh, so this contraction uh, was actually identified, or you can say, calculated by the Francis, and he he conducted many experiments. And after experiments, he uh, proposed some formula for uh, considering the effect of end contractions. Okay, Francis, after carrying out series of experiments, proposed an empirical formula for a discharge over a rectangular weir. He found that the length of the stream of the liquid while flowing over the weir gets contracted at the end of the sill as one figure. Just like you can see an open channel and there is a uh, weir or you can say a notch installed for finding the uh, discharge. So the, the reduction in the width of the sheet of water flowing over the weir, that is the ends contract inward because there is a flow inwards along the walls across the flow leading into the weir. When we have a very high velocity of water, then the shape would be like this. So, if the velocity is very low, then the effect of end conduction is very minimum. So, Francis found that an approximate value of end contraction is one tenth of the height of liquid above the sill or a weir at each side. Okay, Ab say I have a weir or water depth, this may say H. So Francis suggested that at each end, the width which is reduced is one by tenth of H. So higher the H, higher would be the end contraction. Okay. So, in a normal weir with two sides, or you can say with uh, just like we have a two sides here, then the end contraction, or you can say the effective length of the stream of liquid would be L minus 0.2 H. 0.2 kaise hai? 0.1 idhar se or 0.1 idhar se hai. So you need to write L minus 0.2 H instead of L in the previous formula for one particular weir. Okay. So if I say that I have a weir of this kind of a shape that we have three streams of liquid coming out of this weir, uh, then how many end contractions would be in this figure? Kon Kitty and contractions are four, six, six. They could be eight, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six end contractions here. Okay, so we can simply transform the formula as L minus point one NH, which is the number of end contractions says six in the previous figure so ultimately it would be 0.6 h okay where n is the number of end contractions so if we have a, a constant coefficient cd of 0.623 and g value is also constant then the discharge formula would simply reduce to 1.8 for l minus 0.1 n h power 3 by 2 when the end contraction is suppressed, suppressed means that we remove the end contractions and the weir is like this. The value in the above equation is taken as zero. Okay. <clears throat> so problem four states that a 30 meter long weir
say we have a weir which is 30 meters long and if divided into 10 equal base by vertical posts each of 0.6 meter wide dividing into 10 equal base the base means this is one bay This is one bay. Okay. This is another say like two, three. So one bay has two end contraction. So in the, in a given problem, say if we if it is ten equal bays, so how many contractions would all would be there? Twenty, three. sir. Twenty. Very good. So n would be. 10 cross 2, which is 20. 20 end contractions. H is on our pasagi. N 20 a. <clears throat> but the effective length of the wear would be, say the total length of the wear is 30. And it is divided to 10 base with the with the solid post each of 0.6 meters. Say so this is the weir, one post, two post, three post, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is nine and this is the weir, okay? So we have nine posts and 10 base. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So dots representing base. And each post is having a width of 0.6. So what is the width of this obstacle or hurdle? Or, or I say that जहाँ से पानी ने बाहर आना है, उसकी effective length कितनी हो जाएगी? कौन बताएगा? 30 minus 9 into 0. 0.6. Yes, no. Yes, sir. Which is 24.6 meters. Ooh. It is just like this one. This figure means this post has a width of 0. 0.6 and we have nine posts here, say one, uh, two, three, four, five, so till say nine posts. So the effective length of the wheel from which the water flows out would be L minus nine into point six. Okay. Is my kiss you can feel the push layer. Like in your ten niti maripas base you take. Base ten and like in post mapas nine up foot count kar le. Means that ye nine posts, ten equal bays. Hai. Bays means jahan se pani ne bahir aana hai. Ye first bay hai. Ye second hai, third hai, fourth hai, fifth hai, sixth hai, seventh hai, eighth hai, ninth hai, tenth hai. Tenth hai na? Kyunke ek hamesha kam hoga, kyunke side pe bhi to ek maar pas. अब ये भी एक बेस की एंड कॉन्ट्रैक्शन है ना अब मैंने उसको 10 इक्वल पार्ट्स में डिवाइड करना है मींस 10 हिस्सों में 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 ठीक है मींस व्हेन आई इंसर्ट 9 पोस्ट्स देन इट विल मेक 10 बेस ठीक है सर समझ आ गया समझ आ गया ओके so just after that, you, you will write it in the formula 1.84 times L minus 0.1 NH. So 10 equal base. So we have 20 end contractions. And finally, you can solve it.
problem 5 states that a reservoir has a catchment area of 25 square kilometer the maximum rainfall of the area is 25 mm per hour ab ye maine aapko bata diya catchment kya hota hai se maapas se area given hai which is 25 km square aur jo barish us pe baras rahi hai wo hai 25 mm per hour okay so in, in order to find the discharge simply multiply this 25 मिलीमीटर को पहले आप मीटर्स में कन्वर्ट करें और सेकंड में कन्वर्ट करें एंड देन मल्टीप्लाई विद द एरिया सो रेनफॉल इनटू एरिया इट गिव्स क्यू ओके सो दिस इज वी वी रिप्रेजेंटेड विद आईए कैचमेंट एरिया 25 मैक्सिमम रेनफॉल और आप क्या कह रहे हैं 40% ऑफ व्हिच फ्लोस इनटू द रिजर्वर ओवर द वियर ठीक है सो मींस वी नीड इफ दिस इज क्यू देन we need to consider point 4 of this q one say i say this is q1 okay then this is equal to q this is so it's a rational formula for finding the q q is equal to c i a so this is a very common formula so point 4 is here is basically the coefficient okay and i is the rainfall and a is the area q is equal to c i a as we have a normal weir and it's written using francis formula find the length of the weir length find karna ek weir to therefore we have two end contractions theek hai any question koi question kisi ka sir i area wo rainfall hai hamare paas i rainfall hai ji sir hum barish ko millimeter mein kyun measure karte hain क्योंकि बहुत स्मॉल इंटेंसिटी इसकी एक बेसिकली ये जो मैय की जाती है ये एक आप आगे हाइड्रोलॉजी में इसको पढ़ेंगे ये ऐसा नहीं होता कि ये कोई एक डिजाइन स्पेसिफिक डिजाइन बॉटल होती है उसमें से एक आवर में अब आप देखें एक, एक कतरा गिरता है तो मीटर्स तक तो नहीं उसकी डेप्थ बढ़ सकती ना तो मिली में यूली मेयर करते हैं क्योंकि ताकि स्पेसिफिक आ जाए आप मीटर्स में करेंगे तो इट इट वुड बी से पॉइंट डबल जीरो टू फाइव तो उसके फिर उसको मेयर करना थोड़ा मुश्किल हो जाता है ठीक है सो इट इज देर इज अ डिजाइन इंस्ट्रूमेंट इन विच वो जब बारिश के नीचे रख दी जाती है और उसमें मेयर कर लिया जाता है कि से पर आवर कितने मिलीमीटर उसके अंदर एक एक कतरा गिरता है ना उसमें तो आप देखते हैं कि जी आज बारिश हंड्रेड मिलीमीटर रिकॉर्ड की गई है इट इज बेसिकली पर आवर ठीक है यस सर एरिया तो आपका बहुत ज्यादा होता है ना आप क्वांटिट आप ये तो नहीं कह सकते कि इतना पानी बरसा है आप उसका से एक यूनिट कंसीडर कर लेते हैं कि इस यूनिट में इतने मिलीमीटर या इंच में भी इसको लिखा जाता है कि इतने मिलीमीटर पर आवर जो बारिश गिरी है ठीक है फिर पूरे एरिया से मल्टीप्लाई करके हम कह देते हैं कि जितना डिस्चार्ज कलेक्ट हुआ आज गॉट इट yes sir any other question okay so next is the bezens formula for discharge over a rectangular weir just like the francis formula bezens from his after carrying out series of experiments proposed an empirical formula for the discharge over a rectangular weir he found that the value of the coefficient of discharge varies with the height of the water over the sill of the weir thus he proposed an amendment in the formula for rectangular weir we know the discharge of a rectangular weir is this one is according to bezens wo kya kehta hai ji wo kehta hai ji ye cheez jo hai na isko aap delete kar dein isko se aap kar dein mi theek hai so ml and m is equal to this one 0.405.003 over h 2 by 3 cd ki ki jagah pe aapne ये चीज पुट कर देनी है 
तो आपका डिस्चार्ज जो है वो ठीक आएगा अकॉर्डिंग टू बेजेंस ठीक है एंड एच इज दाइट ऑफ वाटर इन मीटर्स एंड In this study, he avoided the effect of end contractions. He avoided the effect of end contractions. Find the discharge of a rectangular wheel which is 4.5 meter long under a head of 600 millimeter by using Bazin's formula. Length and height of water is given. So you you need to use this formula. So Q find करना एल एन एच पी के वन एम इज आर नोन अब देखना एम का कोई फार्मूला है सो वी हैव वन फार्मूला ऑफ एम सो एम इज इक्वल टू पॉइंट फोर जीरो फाइव एक्सेट्रा सो यू कैन इजली फाइंड दिस एम एम इज अगेन बेसिकली कोफिशेंट ठीक है सो टू बाई थ्री सी डी की जगह पे इसने कहा जी इतना कोफिशेंट होना चाहिए बेसिकली और उस कोफिशेंट को उसने रिलेट कर दिया एच से इज अ फंक्शन ऑफ एच So rectangular weir which is six meters long is discharging water under head of three hundred millimeter. Calculate the discharge over the weir by using Francis and Bazin's. So now we have to compare the discharge which is calculated first by Francis and then Bazin's. I think at the at at the moment you have an <coughs> sufficient knowledge to solve this problem. Francis के लिए आपने जो formula देखना है वो जस्ट one point eight four L minus 0.1 nh ठीक है जी अब देखते हैं क्योंकि सिंपल वियर है तो n दो हो जाएगा टू एंड कॉन्ट्रेक्शन सो यू कैन सॉल्व इट एंड फाइंड q एंड सेकेंड यू विल यूज बेजिस फार्मूला सिंपली फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू विल फाइंड m एंड देन कैलकुलेट द डिस्चार्ज q सो यू यू कैन सी दैट The discharge which is calculated using a Francis formula was 1.796, whereas it is less than 1.796 meter cube per second calculated by Francis. Okay. <clears throat> so Bazin's ke formula se jo discharge aa raha ho, these are all empirical equations. Empirical equation means any researcher or scientist. <clears throat> proposed his equation based on the experiments he conducted in his own lab okay so we need to see what are the conditions over which he has done he has performed his experiments so just like if as a as a master student or as a phd student you <coughs> do some experimentation in your lab and based on those experiments based on <coughs> the graph or you, the results you obtain just like You obtain uh, say velocity. Velocity of the flow decreases with increasing the roughness. N is the roughness, and uh, V is the velocity. So this is your uh, proposed graph. I mean, uh, uh, this is this is the result of your experimentations. So, आपने इस कर्व की कोई इक्वेशन इवन एक्सेल भी आपको जिससे इक्वेशन डायरेक्टली दे देते हैं तो कर्व फिटिंग करके आपने इसकी कोई इक्वेशन बना ली ठीक है जी से वन इज इक्वल टू वन ओवर एन और से थ्री डिवाइड बाय एन जी आपने कोई भी इक्वेशन बना ली सो दिस इज एन इम्पेरिकल इक्वेशन विच यू हैव प्रोवाइडेड टू दी ऑडियंस बाय परफॉर्मिंग योर एक्सपेरिमेंट ठीक है इसमें आपकी अप, Purely आपकी अपनी ऑब्जर्वेशन इन्वॉल्व है सो अगर तो ये पब्लिश हो जाती है देन इट बिकम्स एन एम्पेरिकल इक्वेशन अभी तो आपकी स्टडी है ना आपने इसको सबमिट कराया है एंड इट इज पब्लिश आई दिन फॉर्म ऑफ जर्नल पेपर और इट इज इन फॉर्म ऑफ बुक चैप्टर देन इट बिकम्स एन एम्पेरिकल इक्वेशन विच विच कैन बी यूज बाई आई मीन फ्यूचर स्टूडेंट्स विच कैन बी यूज बाई फ्यूचर रिसर्च एज वेल Okay, so and and another thing that if you have proposed any empirical equation, then the researchers uh, following you may also deny your theory as well. Okay, नहीं ऐसा नहीं होता जो मैंने experimentation की है उसमें से curve इस तरह आ रही है तो ये equation ठीक नहीं है ये equation होनी चाहिए तो it फिर ये पूरी एक research है तो 
आई थिंक आपको आइडिया होगा क्योंकि व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन फ्रांसिस एंड बेजिस सो दिस इज द होल केस के फ्रांसिस की से दिस इज द इक्वेशन ऑफ फ्रांसिस दिस इज द इक्वेशन ऑफ बेजिस ठीक है सो लास्ट टॉपिक ऑफ दिस लेक्चर इज द वेलोसिटी ऑफ अप्रोच अप्रोच मींस एस द फ्लो अप्रोचेस अ वियर just on the upstream side of the weir there is a change in velocity okay so sometimes a weir is provided in a stream or a river to measure the flow of the water okay in such a case the water approaching the weir has got some velocity or say you can say that has got an increased velocity which is known as the velocity of approach For example, जैसे एक पानी इस तरह फ्लो कर रहा है आपने उसको कॉन्ट्रैक्ट कर दिया तो इसने कॉन्ट्रैक्ट जैसे ही कॉन्ट्रैक्ट होगा तो इस कॉन्ट्रेक्शन की वजह से देर इज एन इंक्रीज इन दिलोसिटी सो विच वी नीड टू मैयर सो द वेलोसिटी विद विच द वॉटर अप्रोचेज और रीचेज अवेयर बिफोर इट फ्लोज अवर इट इज कॉल्ड दिलोसिटी ऑफ अप्रोच Sorry. You can see that uh, <clears throat> initially the water height is at this point. Okay. When it approaches a weir, there is a slight decrease in water depth. There is a slight decrease in water depth as the flow approaches a weir. The water surface becomes lower due to the acceleration of the flow by force of gravity. The water surface is considerably lower at the weir blade. then it is at 5 feet upstream the elevation difference between the two circled points on the surface of the approach flow is called the velocity head <clears throat> the elevation difference between the two circled points one is this one and the other is this one is called the velocity head and it represents the potential required to produce increase in the velocity between the two points <clears throat> as you know that according to bernoulli's principle or bernoulli's theory uh, the overall energy total energy remains same uh, or the summation of all the heads p over gamma plus z plus v square over 2g so at this point and at this point it is it remains same so if say z is i here and z is low here in order to ab ye z kam ho gaya na yahan pe so in order to make both the uh, i mean both the parts on the each side of the equal sign equal here the velocity head is a bit higher yahan z kam ho gaya na to usko kam ko compensate karne ke liye velocity head v square 2g would be slightly higher okay फाइंड कैसे करना है मैथमेटिकली फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी वुड फाइंड क्यू विदाउट कंसिडरिंग द वेलोसिटी ऑफ अप्रोच एंड आफ्टर दैट वी नो दैट अकाउंट टू कंटिन्यूटी इक्वेशन क्यू इज इक्वल टू ए वी सो फ्रॉम दिस फॉर्मूला वी कैन फाइंड वेलोसिटी ऑफ अप्रोच बाय जस्ट सिंपली डिवाइडिंग एरिया बाय सिंपली डिवाइडिंग क्यू बाय ए अब इस एरिया में क्या चीज यूज करनी है ये मैं आगे आपको बताऊंगा कि एरिया कौन सा है ये तो फ्रॉम दिस वंस वी हैव फाउंड दिस वेलोसिटी हेड वी कैन वेलोसिटी वी कैन फाइंड द वेलोसिटी हेड बाय वी स्क्वायर ओवर 2g ये आपने बनोलिस इक्वेशन में ही पढ़ा था अगेन अब इस अगेन द डिस्चार्ज इज कैलकुलेटेड एंड अबव प्रोसेस इज रिपीटेड फॉर मोर एक्यूरेट डिस्चार्ज q का फार्मूला ये है अब q कैसे फाइंड करना है अब इसमें क्योंकि लिमिट चेंज हो गई एच प्लस एच ए इज द इनिशियल लिमिट माइनस वी आर एक्चुअली सब्रैक्टिंग दिस थिंग ओके सो एच प्लस एच ए पावर थ्री बाई टू माइनस एच ए सो इट इट गिवस डायरेक्टली एच सो द लास्ट प्रॉब्लम इज अ वीयर विच इज टू पॉइंट फोर मीटर्स लॉन्ग 
has a 0.6 meter head of water over the crest. <clears throat> Using Francis formula, find the discharge of the weir if the channel approaching the weir is 6 meter wide and 1.2 meter deep. Okay, so channel approaching a weir means we have a channel. which is 6 meters wide and 1.2 meter deep. Okay, now it's going to be a little bit further. Sorry, it's a jeep. So, let's use it. Okay, so this is 1.2. ये सिक्स है और जबकि वीर की विड्थ क्या है टू पॉइंट फोर दिस इस टू पॉइंट फोर टू पॉइंट फोर विड्थ है और इसमें पानी का लेवल क्या है जीरो पॉइंट सिक्स फर्स्ट ऑफ़ ऑल फाइंड द डिस्चार्ज ओवर द वीर इफ द चैनल अप्रोचिंग सिंपल पहले पार्ट में तो हमने विलोसिफिय अप्रोच कंसीडर नहीं करनी और उसमें फ्रांसिस फॉर्मूला के थ्रू एन टू पे इक्वल पुट करके हम सिंपली वीर की डायमेंशन विच इस 2.4 लेंथ है और हाइट 0.6 है उससे क्यू फाइंड कर लेंगे 1.95 ओके सो नाउ आफ्टर दैट यू नीड टू फाइंड वीए बाय यूजिंग दिस So in this uh, area is important that which area we need to find the cross sectional area of the water flowing in a channel is just on the upstream side. It is six times 0.6 channel ki puri width which is six and 0.6 is the height of water which is flowing over the liquid. <coughs> इसमें कैसे आएगा? Six times point six. Six is the total width of the channel, जिसकी वजह से ये आगे contact हो रहा है. और height कितना contact हो रहा है? Height कितना flow कर रहा है? So इस सम velocity of approach निकाल लेंगे. Okay? So six times ये ये याद रखना है. Six times point six. So by using the previous Q at this area. You can find V from this V. V we can find the velocity head V square over 2G. Or then total head ka ga, H plus H or baki simply use equation ma apne port karna. Ye, ye jo equation ye aadakna apne. This one H plus H minus H A. So is ko aap H1 bhi kya sakta hai. Thik hai? Any confusion? Any question? Okay, so <clears throat> the last topic, just like similar to the flow of, of flow over weir, flow over notches, is flow through orifice, etc. Is flow through mouthpieces. But we, we will not study into detail about the flow through mouthpieces. That is very much similar to orifice. So uh, all the numericals, formula, etc. is more or less same, similar to that of orifice. So mouthpiece is just an addition of a pipe in front in uh, externally or internally through an orifice okay say ye aapka orifice hai agar if you remember so ek aapne pipe fit kar diya chota sa either it can be external or it, even it can be internal say if it, if you have an orifice here so the water will flow agar internal fix karenge to losses zyada honge kyunki yahan se pani divert ho ke idhar jayega so it's better to fix a small pipe externally just like अगर आप एक टैंक देखते हैं अपना टैंक टैंक वाटर टैंक ओवर एड टैंक आपका है तो जब भी पाइप फिटिंग भी करते हैं तो वो अगर आज आप एक नलका लगाते हैं तो वो कुछ ना कुछ पाइप इनिशियली आप टैंक से निकालते हैं और फिर यहाँ पे आप टैब फिट करते हैं ऐसा ही है बिल्कुल इधर फिक्स नहीं कर देते क्योंकि देर आर मेनी रीजन्स 
क्योंकि जब अगर से टैप नहीं होगा तो दे कैन बी इसे सीपीएच प्रॉब्लम इन साइड द वॉल टैंक अब जो इसमें पानी आएगा वो यहाँ से इधर घिरेगा रादर देन अगर ये ना हो अगर पानी का फ्लो तो फिर ये ड्रेन होना शुरू हो जाता है इस तरह ठीक है एक ये भी रीजन है और दूसरा वी नो दैट डिस्चार्ज ऑन ऑफिस डिपेंड्स ऑन इट्स कोफिशियंट और डिस्चार्ज प्रोस्पेक्ट बाय द इंजीनियर्स दैट द डिस्चार्ज ऑन आवर ऑफिस इज टू लेस ड्यू टू लो वैल्यू ऑफ कोफिशियंट और डिस्चार्ज इट वाज फाउंड दैट आफ्टर कंडक्टिंग सीरीज ऑफ एक्सपेरिमेंट्स बाय इंजीनियर्स दैट इफ अ शॉर्ट पीस पाइप बी फिटेड टू एन ऑफिस इट विल इंक्रीज द वैल्यू ऑफ कोफिशियंट और डिस्चार्ज एंड ऑफ कोर्स डिस्चार्ज टू सच अ पाइप हुज लेंथ इज जनरली मोर देन टू टाइम्स द डायमीटर ऑफ एन ऑफिस एंड इज फिटेड एक्सटर्नली और इंटरनली टू द ऑफिस नोन एज माउथ पीस ओके नेक्स्ट इज द फ्लो थ्रू नोजल्स नोजल्स आपको पता है कि इट इज फॉर इंक्रीजिंग द वेलोसिटी ऑफ द वाटर डिस्चार्ज के सेम होता है अगर आप उसका एरिया कम कर देंगे तो फिर वेलोसिटी हाई हो जाएगी एंड दिस हाई वेलोसिटी वाटर इज रिक्वायर्ड इन फायर फाइटिंग सर्विस स्टेशंस माइनिंग पार्ट ऑफ प्रोडक्ट सेक्टर अ नोजल इज अ टैपरिंग माउथपीस व्हिच इज फिटेड टू एन आउटलेट एंड ऑफ द पाइप अ नोजल इज जनरली यूज्ड टू हैव high velocity water as it converts pressure head into kinetic head at its outlet okay so this is all about flow through weirs so now we have two topics now we are left with the two topics so probably we have two lectures as well flow through pipes and open channel flow any question सर वो जो आपने वाटर टैंक की 